付之一篓。So a third ace, bringing three more match points. Game set match was rough. Six one, six four. And I think Steffi Graf will be pretty glad to have that one behind her. A potentially awkward encounter against one of the two people who have beaten her in 1996. And I think glad too to have beaten the rain. Just odd spots still falling. It's very dark here, though perhaps you wouldn't think so, thanks to the wonders of electronics. The light is not marvellous. And a little curtsy to the Duchess of Luster in the Royal Box as they leave the court. Draft the winner 6 1, 6 4 in 55 minutes of actual play. So Steffi Graf is the first player through to the quarterfinals where she will defeat, where she will meet either Jana Novotna, who of course she met in the final here uh, in 19. 16 years of age, and it really is incredible. It's Henrietta's first time here at Roland Garros. You saw Martina's stats here. It's the uh, third round, the two years she's been here, 95 and 96. Lindsay Davenport beat her in 95, and Karina Habsudova beat her in 96. And uh, Habsudova comes from Slovakia. Make no uh, real point of that, but uh, so too does her opponent today. She comes from. Uh, Novi Zamki, says Henrietta, who first claimed to fame, not real fame, but prominence in the women's circuit when uh, she won last year a breakthrough tournament in Warsaw. Martina won only two tournaments last year, but this girl won in Warsaw. She beat Barbara Paulus, the second seed, to win her first major title. And this year has uh, got through to the semi final of one in Budapest. But uh, last year was the breakthrough year, and it took her up to 42 in the rankings from 137. And she's improved on that this year, particularly thanks to that semi-final place in Budapest and the round of the last 32 in the Australian and at Lipton. She's now ranked 37, a nominee, as I said, for the WTA Newcomer of the Year award. Glorious day, all the clouds are blown away. Uh, a goodish breeze, but nothing that's going to upset the players. 10,000 seater Suzanne Long Long Court. It looks very impressive indeed. Simon, whilst the um, courier match was on, I took a walk down in that direction and watched a few of the outside courts being played and obviously there are lesser stars out there than uh, on the main courts but I have to say that that wind which uh, if you look at the Williams. flags it looks like it's a pleasant wind but it really is doing funny things with the balls out there not not all of them of course but some of the guys and gals were they were stepping into it to hit a ball and then suddenly having to lunge because it died on them and uh, inside this arena that wind can swirl and it goes to the chef Martina Higgins, Swiss. Yes. Uh, got high sides this arena but you can see from Martina's hair in that previous shot that it was uh, being ruffled so the wind is getting down a, a fair amount it's might be gale force but maybe soon it could be a bit of a problem Lady who's uh, just going from strength to strength this year. Time. Earnings of a million and a quarter dollars so far this year. And 
and we're well, still in May. It's incredible. And endorsements which will uh, catapult her. Oh, she's already a multi, multi millionaires. But still, attractively, has that air of exuberance about her. So, uh, this is the backing girl to start. Starting well. Well, Hingis uh, has been out for a while. Everybody knows that uh, with a knee injury, fell off the horse, but. This is not an easy first match for her. Now, of all the floaters in the draw, Inuyasha the is probably uh, one of the more dangerous. This lead cord and uh, full of disguise on the forehand approach. First time she misses her first serve, she throws in a double fault. Not a devastating forehand, Martina Hingis. In fact, none of her shots on their own are too frightening, but put together with all the natural talent and footwork that she has, it's a compulsive package. Well, the players feel that her backhand is the better shot and so they play the forehand and I think they've played the forehand into form <laughs> it certainly has improved so the first three points in a row for Henrietta Nagyova but then nothing much Hingis takes the opening game on the break It's that natural talent that strikes me above everything else. I heard you say about uh, intelligence and the way she thinks the way through, but there isn't anything particularly striking about the way she plays individual shots. It's just her footwork and the way that she's naturally at the ball before you think she is. Well, this is part of the reading of, uh, of the game and the thinking that points out that she seems to, to know exactly what she wants to do, and as a result of that, she, she seems to know what you are about to do and she's almost there before you've hit the ball and so unless you come up with great uh, disguise on your shots uh, she's, she's there most of the time she I, I don't think she's a great athlete uh, as far as uh, moving around the court I, I think she's just average uh, nothing spectacular and perhaps that's another one of the average type of shots that she has but but she just has everything in the in a complete package
effective were she to have a weakness in her game at all it would in fact be on her serve especially the second serve Too many cheap points on the serve, but one directed right into the corner. but just moving a little slowly to it often that slowness betrays nerves and perhaps she is suffering a little bit here it's a big occasion for her the biggest shield I've ever been in her life taking on the world's number one on this stage it's amazing how often uh, people are so nervous when they play the superstar they feel that they just don't want to be embarrassed two first serves and she served a double both times what did you say about her there before you hit the shot yeah. it's, it's, it's gorgeous I, I could just sit and watch look look how she's really leaning a little bit to the right waiting for the forehand to come across court, and it did, and so she just goes down the line. <laughs> Terrific retaliation. Yes, bit of a present. Hingis at the moment is mopping her up. She leads three love in this opening set. Two for uh, Henrietta Nagyova. She's really going through it here. Two break points for Martina Hingis for five love. Yeah, well, that fall off the horse has obviously done her a great deal of harm. She's not looking the same player. It really is. Uh, it's good to watch. Uh, you, you have to be sad for her opponent though we isolate here on on Hingis and just see the semi-western forehand grip and she's just really just so tuned into exactly what she's doing on the court the opponent strikes me as someone who I don't know if it's the occasion I, I, I must be honest I've heard about her but without having seen her play before but I don't know if it's the occasion I don't know if the, if it's the breeze uh, or what it is but she seems to be hitting all her shots a little bit too carefully and, and as a result of that you, you she winds up to hit a as an example a backhand 
and you get the impression, well, this is going to be a real big shot, and it just comes back as an average shot. It would be nice if she could just develop that power if, if it isn't natural for her and just take away a little bit of the over-caution. Melanie's not watching. Serving for the set at five, love. Oh. They're okay. Well, that will help. Second double. needs it's a truism of course but she so badly needs a game to get something going feel better about herself oh. well she's not going to get a game if uh, she doesn't oh. hit a return better than that I mean it was just a, a s average second serve middle of the court and I think it's going to take full advantage of that late call and apparently an incorrect call it's been overruled by the umpire disagreed by Henrietta Henrietta saying to the umpire Give me a break. I need every point I can get. I haven't won many. Fiona Edwards is not coming down off that chair. Okay. On the line. The question was, was it long on the line? Oh. Here are three set points. Uh, sorry, set point after just 18 minutes. Didn't she deserve it? And no wonder she's getting a healthy round of applause. Two four hands down the line by uh, Hingis, clipping the net. And she's got the height of the net just about spot on. Second ace, second set point. Terrific second shot from Hingis. Set point number three. Oh. Yeah, generally, the returns have been the real problem. So a whitewash first set. Start again.
Fingers, of course, herself comes from, uh, well, the former Czech Republic. She uh, comes from the Slovakian part. Moved to Switzerland when she was seven. Kozice was her hometown. String by Hingis. Beautiful movement. That's what you want to see all tennis players do. Move forward, take the ball on the rise when it gets up to about shoulder height and just nail it. what Nagioba didn't do a couple of shots before that. Let it fall, Contact. lost the impetus, lost the momentum, lost the point. First time uh, Hingis has had break point that she didn't win the point. Yes, well played. Hingis <laughs> thought about coming in and then thought better of it. win this game she'll feel so much better <laughs> she's better than she's shown us a lot lot better okay. and she knows it may and maybe about to prove it Grand Slam victory, the winner in Australia. A set up against Henrietta Nagyova is Martina Hingis. A game down. Oh, glorious shot. She says herself is her best shot. Incidentally, she says that clay is her favorite surface. You wouldn't argue with her on this performance.
that would make sense, wouldn't it, Bob? With her kind of game, Clay would seem yes. ideally suited. Well, at her young age, on a percentage-wise, she's ninth uh, all-time winning percentage on clay. That is for ladies, of course, and uh, she's got a winning percentage of 0.733. And ahead of her are Graf and Sanchez, Beccaria and Sellers. Not bad players ahead of her. Yeah, Chris she, Evert, <laughs> but Martina <she> Navratilova. <laughs> but she's going to pass most of those without any problem. Yes. Yeah. Fourth double. I think what's uh, hurting her on the, her serve is she's so scared of the return of serve that she's doing a little bit too much with the ball. Oh. Combination of doing a little bit too much with the ball and as she hits the ball she's leaning back getting ready for the, to face the return of serve before she actually finishes hitting the ball. She takes the racket back as if it's going to be another big double hander. shot after a decent rally and here's break point Another gift, and Hingis. 2-1 with her first break of this second set. And it's a very difficult afternoon in the sun indeed for Henrietta Nagyova. With Fader Columbia. So is the torture going to continue? Martina Hingis, a set and 2-1 up. First round of the French Open. It's amazing, isn't it? Most of the daring shots, I mentioned about her being daring before, have come from Nagyova. Martina Hingis has so many qualities, but daring isn't one of them. Hingis back after a se seven-week absence and Tracy showing no signs of injury problems or problems with her fitness. First set took just 20 minutes. It was for love after 12 minutes. Her opponent is Henrietta Nagyova from Slovakia, 18 years old. 
Nagiova held her serve to win her first game of the match to start the second set. Kingis with a break up 2-1 and love 30. Now 15-30. Martina Hingis, 5'6", six, just 16 years old, now living in Switzerland, moved there when she was seven. has not lost a match this year, has won all six titles that she's played in. Number one in the world, the youngest number one ever. This is the first break opportunity of the match for Nagiova. Third French Open for Martina Hingis. Made it to the third round last year and her first year in 1995. Oh! That's long, so uh -huh. deuce. Bill, you had mentioned that Martina Hingis has been off the tour for about seven weeks. Nagiova, 18, 5'10", quite tall. In Slovakia most must have known Martina Hingis as a young girl in Slovakia and in fact these two won the French Open juniors together a couple of years back one doubles playing together 1994 has been on the defensive. It has been all Hingis. The semifinals in Budapest earlier this year. Has one tour singles title. There's Nagiova. That came last year in Warsaw. Deuce. Everybody in the tennis world knows that five weeks ago, Martina Hingis had arthroscopic surgery. She had a slight tear in the posterior cruciate ligament when she fell off her horse. Actually, it was a friend's horse. Didn't feel it right away. Went to sleep, woke up the next day. It was swollen, so she's back early. She said usually it takes about six to eight weeks to heal from an injury like this, but she said, I'm young. I feel great. Martina Hingis after winning the first set, six love. The first thing I wanted to check out with Martina Hingis was her movement, and that looks fine. And the second thing was her confidence because she hasn't played in seven weeks. But look how she hits this ball on the rise. So much power from that upper body. You wonder if that's the kind of injury that as the two weeks progress, it does begin to bother her. I don't think so. I think once uh, she's been in physical therapy the whole time, started physical therapy about three or four days after the surgery, to me, actually, she looks stronger, especially stronger in the upper body. Seems like she's hitting the ground strokes even harder. She's lost points. Generally, they've been like that. Nagiova with only five winners. Hingis with 22. Totally dominant in this match. Really has taken charge. Running Nagiova all over the court. And that's 
ball to Magliova had just a little bit of spin. Spun sideways. Misjudged it from Martina Hingis. But what impresses me about Hingis is just the variety in her game. Unbelievable. She has every shot in the book. The slices, the top spins, can go to the net. Obviously a great, great baseliner. Great instincts on the court. Oh. Um. Double fault. The sixth of the match for Nagiova. And the bad news for the rest of the field here at the French Open is that she grew up playing on clay and it's her favorite surface. You can tell by the way that she moves on the surface that she grew up on it and she feels extremely comfortable because when she's run really wide for a shot, she'll slide into the shot or she'll slide into the drop shot when she runs up towards it. her second game of the match, but still down a set and a break. Legend is here. I do business 24 hours. Back in Paris, Martina Hingis taking the first set in 20 minutes, six love and up three two now in the second, serving at 15 love. And 15 all. Martina was only 12 when she won the French Open junior title in 1993. That would be the youngest Grand Slam juniors champion ever. How young can you get? You're playing against 18-year-olds. It's amazing. She broke a string. In the middle of that point, about three shots back, she broke a string and she knew it. And as soon as you lose all that tension, the string is... Strings are like a trampoline. That's why she hit that last ball long. You know, one of the things that Steffi Groff does so well is when she's in a one-sided match, she generally is able to keep her focus and concentration and stay into the match. Is that one of the things that Martina Hingis has to learn how to do? No, I think that uh, she's doing it. I think she's still very much in control of this match. Serving at 15.30. That's the variety that I'm talking about. Just such a delicate drop shot there. She has such great hands, soft hands. Can hit the ball really hard, but then change up and hit it soft. Well, no matter how Hingis does here at Roland Garros, she will be number one after the French Open. Steffi Graf, even if she wins, cannot reclaim the number one spot after the French. Tina Hingis now two games away from moving through to the second round. And Tracy mentioned that she is the youngest number one ever. And here's a look at the others. Tracy Austin, 17 years, three months, 26 days. Monica beat me by seven days. I don't think I'm going to get the calculator out and make sure that these dates are right. <laughs> no, but Hingis younger than anybody by nine months. Great finesse there. How Soft easy hands. did she make that look? That's what's amazing about her. Just great feel. By the way, Hingis would not be the youngest French Open champion. Because she's uh, 16 years and about seven and a half months. Monica Sellis was 16 years and six months when she won in 1990. So that is one of the few records that uh, Martina Hingis will not be able to claim. Beautifully out there. 
and she is a great mover and also has great anticipation so those combined awesome love 30 Coming up next, here on USA, day two of the French Open, we'll see the number two men's seed, Michael Chang. Martina Hingis rose to that number one ranking so quickly since last September. The U.S. Open, she got to the semifinals, won her first tournament in Filderstadt in October, second in Oakland, beating Monica Seles and took Steffi to five sets, a tough five-setter in the, in the Chase Championships in Manhattan, in Madison Square Garden, excuse me. But really, the big change, Phil, was when she lost early in the Olympics and her mom gave her a big pep talk and said, you know, you're really not working hard enough. And Martina said, hey, but practice is boring, you know, I'm not... I don't love the practice, and her mom said, well, if you want to be a great tennis player, you're going to have to make more of an effort. So she did, and everything has turned around. The rise has been so fast. Still one break point remaining. Three straight points for Nagiova, and we go to Deuce. just couldn't execute little sign of temper there you will see that from Martina Hingis she will get a warning once in a while she really wears her heart on her sleeve she smiles a lot during her matches throws her racket gets angry lets you know how she's feeling is her big weapon it's her best shot especially that backhand down the line it's the the best in the game watch how early she hits this way out in front tremendous shoulder rotation a fourth break point. And that's the backhand down the line that I'm talking about. Just seems to hit it so easily. That one actually was inside out. Oh. Wide, so there it is. Martina Hingis, uh, Six love and now five two. And when we come back, Hingis will serve for the match at the French Open on USA. Martina Hingis now three points away from closing out Henrietta Nagiova and moving through to the second round here in Paris. 15 love. Nagiova is going to be in trouble and starts to move into the net. 
It just makes it seem so easy. Has plenty of time to hit that shot down the line. Third double fault. Takes us to 30-15. It is a breezy day today here in Paris. See, look at that back end down the line. That's not easy to do to change the direction of the ball that's coming cross court and hit a perfect winner down the line. So Please, two match points for Martina Hingis. Martina Hingis acknowledging the applause here at Court Suzanne Langlan, named after the great French ladies champion. And Martina Hingis in the third round would be slated to meet Anna Kornikova in the all glamour future of women's tennis third round match. And then Barbara Paulus, if the seeds hold in the round of 16, Arantxa Sanchez Vicario in the quarterfinals, and Monica Seles in the semifinal. One can have her serve broken. I mean, that's why it's hard, so hard to call this year's Wimbledon. It's true. Most of them are better in service return than they are on their own serve. Because you see Kornikova. Well, look how high that ball's bouncing today. And that was an interesting round because Kurnikova hit like six shots in a row down the line, and then Maioli hit six shots in a row cross court. Usually, whoever hits a cross court in that Thank rally you. would win the point, but uh, Those are ready. Thank uh, you. Kurnikova had more pace, and actually, that last shot hit sort of cross court right in that patch, that brown patch, paid off. <laughs> 